Thank you. The next part we have um, will be fascinating. I assure you, I know both people, and I'm expecting to hear them. So we have two professionals who come from a very different... Sorry? Our first mistake, big mistake, maybe? Yeah? <laughs> we can't do it without making mistakes. Um, so my apologies, Philippe. Um, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> We'll have a conversation in which Noga, the real Noga, there's only one, um, will speak to Philippe Zoati, who is the founder and CEO of Mirova. And he will tell you a little bit about Mirova before they start their talk. But um, I also want to thank Noga very much for taking on this role and this incredible conversation. And just to say that Noga Leptiona Dan is the founder and CEO of GreenEye and the managing partner of Value Square, an impact investment fund in the public equity arena. And I think there's no better person to make this conversation with Philippe. Thank you. Okay. So for you to know really the real Philip <laughs> is, uh, I'll tell you a bit about him. So, through the creation of Minerva, a management company dedicated exclusively for, uh, to sustainable investing and an affiliated of Natexis Investment Managers, Philip has contributed to the emergence of sustainable financing both in France and in Europe. Philip has also been involved with various professional associations, French and international, and is currently a chair of Finance for Tomorrow an initiative which seeks to promote and develop green and sustainable finance in France. His previous experience includes high-level management roles, remember that for later, as a deputy CEO of Ostrom Asset Management at the Casse de Depont, I'm trying it, La Banque Pastel and Credit Agricole. I wanna... But two interesting facts about Philip. One, he's a novel writer besides being a financier, so the heart is there, and he loves street art. And he even acquired a painting from an Israeli painter two years ago named Adam Yekutieli. So, welcome, Philip. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> so, uh, let's start. So, uh, can you please uh, tell us a bit about Mi Mirova, your strategy, and how do you invest? Do you need the presentation to put the next uh, slide? Maybe, maybe there, there is one slide uh, after this one. Thank you very much first. And uh, thank you uh, to uh, Nia and Omri uh, for this invitation. I'm very happy to be, uh, to be here today. Uh, Mirova is a, a company that we, uh, that we uh, created five years ago. Uh, and it's a kind of an interesting story because it's a, a, a small company within a very big group. Uh, we are an affiliate of Natexis. Natexis is one of the 15 uh, uh, biggest uh, asset managers in the world. We, uh, Natexis, manage uh, more than 1 trillion US dollars. Uh, and, uh, and we are a small part of this. We, uh, uh, we launched uh, Mirova five years ago as a spin-off from Natexis Asset Management. Uh, and uh, with the idea to uh, focus completely on responsible investment, sustainable investment. And uh, uh, we started with uh, 3 billion euros, and now we manage about 11 billion euros, five years later. Uh, and uh, we are still a part of Natixis. So uh, uh, I said that we, we represent 1% of this big organization. So a couple of years uh, later, I, I, I used to say that Natixis was only 99% not responsible. Uh, but uh, I think it's, it's changing today because we are really pulling all the uh, organization behind us uh, with uh, what we have uh, of done uh, the last, uh, this last year. And um, uh, we, uh, we have teams based in Paris, London, Boston. Uh, the 11 billions we, uh, we manage uh, 
uh, come uh, uh, from uh, retail investors in France and in the US, but also institutional investors, I mean, all around the world. And we uh, manage different kind of products, I mean, uh, across asset classes in uh, listed equities, uh, fixed income, but also uh, impact, invest, in, impact investing, uh, or what we call impact, impact investing, but maybe we will speak about this in a, uh, infrastructure, uh, natural capital, and, uh, and, and all kinds of, of things related to, to impact. And in terms of shares from the 11, uh, 11 uh, bil billion, how much is equity in the public arena? How much spot, is spot the private equity? 50% 50 equity, 20% uh, bonds. Uh, but in bonds, we are focusing only on green bonds. So we were, uh, six years ago, one of, really one of the pioneers of the green bond market. We've started at the very beginning of the green bond market. And the rest, the 30% the uh, percent, uh, are uh, invested in infrastructure and, and, uh, and real assets. Mm. Okay. So, and you come from the real finance profession. Yeah. You always had held and still holding very high positions in uh, financial, traditional financial uh, institutions. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about the journey that brought you to sustainable finance and how yeah. did you get there? Yes, I, uh, as I am not a millennial, uh, <laughs> I, no? I, I, did not, I did not start from the beginning with, uh, with impact investing and, uh, and with sustainable investment. Uh, so I started uh, uh, to work in the finance industry at the uh, beginning of the... 90s, uh, and, uh, uh, and so I spent all my career in the asset management business. But uh, in uh, 07, 08, and uh, I think, uh, I think uh, Christoph spoke about the, uh, the global financial crisis uh, in, in, in his speech, I mean, uh, it was clearly uh, something very, very strong for me because at that time, I've, uh, I had also already spent something like 20 years, 15, 20 years in the, in the industry. And I was one of these uh, uh, guys who came in the industry with uh, a very uh, uh, high quantitative, you know, engineer background uh, with the idea that we are, we are going to change completely the financial system and, uh, and make it more rational and uh, more efficient. And, uh, and when the financial ca crisis came, uh, it was uh, really a shock. And, uh, uh, and uh, I just understood that, uh, I mean, putting all these uh, rationality, quantitative tools uh, was only useful if we uh, keep the objective. I mean, if we, uh, uh, if we uh, get more sense in, uh, in what we were doing. And so this, this was the reason we, uh, we, 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 uh, I started to look at, the, at the responsible investment. But at that time, I was uh, the number two of this big organization, you know. Uh, supposed to become the number one uh, a couple of years later, and uh, and we uh, and and with a couple of colleagues, we tried to uh, to change from the interior. I mean, from uh, uh, the interior of the, this organization, and to propose to integrate ESG thinking, ESG integration, as the heart of the company, as uh, the philosophy of the company. And uh, we had, I mean, so strong pushback from the organization, so strong pushback from the uh, uh, investment managers, that clearly, uh, I mean, we had to, to think about it and, to, and, and find an, 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 another way to do it. And uh, uh, entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship was the way to do it. So uh, we proposed to, uh, to, to do this, to, uh, to make this spin-off, to take only three, three billions, which were the ones who were managed through uh, traditional uh, social, social... Pocket area. money. They yeah, gave you pocket money pocket to play money. with. Three, three billions as pocket money, that, that, that was not bad. And, uh, and, and, and decided to do it, I mean, with high conviction. And not with, uh, I mean, to clearly avoid any greenwashing and to do it with a high conviction. Integrate ESG in all we do. Uh, we had, uh, from the beginning, a, a very strong uh, environmental and social research team. We have 10, 12 people working only uh, in uh, ESG analysis. And, uh, and from this, we moved uh, from traditional SRI ESG to impact. And I think this is very important because we had a lot of discussion about impact. Uh, impact is important, but we also need to complete ch change, completely change the whole financial system. We need to, uh, to also to move I mean, at the, uh, in the core of, of, of this system and to reallocate a lot of money to, uh, to solutions. Uh, of course, uh, entrepreneurs, startups, 
but also big, big, uh, big corporates, and we, we need to change the, the, I mean, the whole system. The idea of investing in companies and changing them, not just trying to find the private, equity, private equities, but the real, not the real, but the public uh, shares. Yeah. When you look at an investment, first of all, what do you look at? Uh, what do you look for in investments, and how does your model? What does your model look like? I know we are investors, so our objective. I mean, when we uh, go to uh, to work uh, in the morning, we uh, we uh, we are first investors. So we uh, our objective is to find some good companies with uh, uh, good visibility. Uh, sustainable uh, cash flows, I mean, uh, good the management team. This is our work. Uh, but uh, the way we do it comes from uh, this, uh, the, the, the view we have of the, uh, this, uh, the, the change of the economy. Uh, so we think that we are in a, a clearly in a turning point for, of this economy because of climate change, because of, of all these issues, because of these uh, sustainable development goals. And this is the way we look at the companies. I mean, you know, there are 1,500 companies in the world. Uh, at the end of the day, we build portfolios with 50, 60, 70 stocks. Uh, so you, you need a way to look at these 1,500. What, what is the grid you use? And the grid we use with high skills is this one, is how these companies are integrated environmental and social challenges, as this, as this, uh, are these challenges really at the top of mind of the managers, uh, do they innovate enough, uh, are they linked with this, the, the startup ecosystem? These are the questions that we, are, that we uh, are asking ourselves before investing. And um, in your book, you criticize the traditional investment world, the finance, uh, financial world, in terms of short-term uh, short vision and not taking responsibility on ignoring environmental and social issues. But you're managing 10 billion dollar, uh, euros. So it man you manage to take from them and move to the right side of the pool. How did yes. you do it? How do you treat? How do you manage to deal with your competitors? What's your? How do you portray your advantages? I mean, you know, when we started the Mirova five six years ago, uh, it was a, uh, uh, it was still an intuition. I mean, uh, it was before COP twenty one. It was before the Paris Agreement uh, about climate, uh, and uh, oh, it was the very beginning of of, of this story. Today, uh, I mean, even in our organization, again, uh, we are one out of 30 uh, asset management companies uh, within Atixis. When we started... The best one. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, when we started six years ago, we, we were clearly the only one who uh, was speaking about ESG, about impact investing. Today, all the 30 are speaking about this. So today, uh, uh, I mean, in Europe, I mean, uh, all the asset management companies are... PRI signatories, uh, speaking about ESG, speaking at conferences and so on. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> the challenge today is to uh, uh, not only to differentiate our, ourselves from all this movement, but to avoid that this uh, mainstreaming uh, is not uh, um, uh, diluting uh, the message. I mean, it's very important because uh, 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 it's not saying that uh, we... Somebody says before that we need to uh, uh, protect impact. Uh, I, I don't know if I, I would say the same thing. We need more money into impact. We need more money into ESG. We need to uh, really mainstream. So mainstreaming is a good news, but mainstreaming should not be greenwashing. So we need to continue to uh, to innovate, and this is what we do. We are uh, uh, moving from uh, uh, you know. Uh, Climate and carbon was clearly the heart of, uh, of uh, our business a couple of years ago. Now we are more and more into the social impact, but we are also looking to biodiversity, for example. Biodiversity is clearly one of the next frontier of the responsible investment uh, community. And, uh, and for uh, all these steps, we, uh, we have done a lot of work in uh, measuring the impact, looking really in depth, understanding the, uh, the issues uh, at stake, and then find innovative solutions and investments. And all the group does it, or only Minerva? 
Uh, I hope that they will do the same thing. I mean, it, that, that's so good. I, 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 I right like. I mean, that's good news to have competitors. Yeah. That's yeah. very good news. Okay, so now uh, you mentioned Paris. Yes. So we all know Paris as a beautiful capital with rich history and architecture. Yet, in your book, here I'm doing a promotion: Paris, Thank the you. kilometer zero of green finance. You emphasize the historical role of Paris in terms of sustainability. But not only that, you stress that the role of Paris should be taking in becoming the world green and sustainable financial center. In your vision, what is a green financial center and how should Paris get there? Okay, so first of all, I, am, uh, I was very sad that you, uh, you, you chose, uh, uh, the previous speaker chose London as a comparison. <laughs> You should have chosen Paris. It was too high level. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, uh, it's interesting because uh, the uh, financial center is where the business, the financial business is really, uh, I mean, blooming and growing. When you, when you speak about, about finance in, uh, in, uh, in the U.S., you speak about Wall Street. When you speak about uh, finance in London, in, uh, in the UK, you speak about the city. So uh, the, the finance is al always growing in a city, in a financial center. And this is exactly what we call an ecosystem. And uh, the ecosystem uh, or uh, marketplace uh, is uh, something that we have in Paris in, in, in this kind of, uh, of topics. I mean, an ESG uh, impact. We have really a very strong ecosystem for a couple of reasons. Uh, I, I see uh, mainly three reasons for, for, for this. First one is that we have started to, uh, uh, to invest uh, in uh, socially responsible investments for years, I mean, for decades. I mean, it started 20, 25 years ago uh, with the first socially responsible investment funds. Uh, so this is, there is a long history for, for this. Second reason is clearly uh, the Paris Agreement. Uh, the uh, French asset managers, French investors, French institutional investors feel that they have a kind of responsibility to, uh, to follow this Paris Agreement and to make it, make it happen. Uh, and, and the third reason is uh, the, the good and strong relationship be between the private and, and the public se sector. And uh, I mean, uh, it's also regulation. Regulation is not. Uh, I mean, we, we should not only uh, always wait for regulation, but uh, sometimes it's good. Uh, for example, uh, three years ago, uh, France was the first country to uh, make it compulsory for institutional investors to measure and to disclose the carbon footprint of their portfolio. And it has... Uh, Coming soon in Israel. Yeah, that's good news because it's not a huge regulation. It's not, uh, it's not really, really painful. But it's a good way to start a, a, a discussion, you know, between asset managers and investors about this, and to also uh, strengthen and improve the way we measure uh, the, this kind of impacts. Okay, and um, from Paris to Tel Aviv, in Israel, we are very proud to be called the startup nation. We are now trying to be the impact nation. Uh, as an investor, what do you think Israel's main advantages are? And what types of investment are you looking at here? Uh, I think you are maybe already uh, an impact nation uh, without knowing it. <laughs> uh, you know, we, uh, we, we, we have launched, for example, uh, three years ago, uh, an investment fund which uh, invests in the rehabilitation of degraded land. Uh, it's a partner in partnership with the... Uh, United Nations Convention to Combat Desertif Desertification. Uh, and uh, the uh, objective was to, uh, I mean, fulfill one of the uh, sustainable development goals. I think it's uh, the 15.3, you know, it's about uh, life on land. And uh, by 2030, uh, one of the objectives is to uh, reach land degradation neutrality. That means stop to degrade land in the, in the world. Every year we degrade 12 million hectares of land in the world. And so the objective was to invest in the rehabilitation of land. And so we, uh, we, we, we made a first closing of the fund with private and public investors last year. Uh, and we made our first investment in Peru. The second one is ongoing in Bhutan. There is another one in Africa. And uh, often 
we meet with Israeli Actec uh, in uh, in this kind of deals because uh, be, because the people we are, we work with in in these countries are also in relationship with them. I mean, the Netafim and, all, and others of, of, of this world. And so uh, I think uh, uh, doing impact is also, a, uh, you know, uh, understanding that impact is important. Because sometimes we do impact, but we are not uh, uh, enough aware of what, of what we are doing. So I think this is very important. And I think we need your push. I think an external vision is a lot of time is pushing us. And lastly, uh, I would like to get your advice. <laughs> we are here with 600 people, and many of us are from the Israel's impact and responsible investment world, struggling to move uh, the financial institutions to move and adopt this vision. How do you suggest we do so? Yeah, I think maybe uh, first thing is, uh, do not wait for the regulation to, uh, <laughs> to tell you what to do. Uh, I think this is very important because uh, there is a, I mean, you, uh, Christopher again mentioned the, regu the huge regulation wave that we uh, had in Europe and it's continuing and now everybody is just waiting for regulation to, to move. Uh, uh, so this is the first point. Second point is uh, uh, listen to your clients. Uh, because uh, That you are telling the financial institutions. Yes. Listen to your clients. Listen we, to you, your clients. We do not listen enough to our clients. For example, and a uh, link between regulation and this, for example, uh, there is a regulation in, uh, in Europe, in probably in uh, other countries, when you uh, go to the bank to, uh, to, to, uh, to um, invest, uh, uh, the financial advisor has to ask you a, couple, uh, a list of questions about uh, your uh, investment horizon, about uh, the risk you want to take, but there is no question about your preferences in terms of environmental and social impacts. You should do this. I mean, institutional, institutional, uh, I mean uh, institutions should do this. And, uh, and now it, it will probably will become became a regulation in Europe to do this. But don't don't wait for regulation. Okay. Start. I mean, uh, uh, the discussion with, with with the client with the investors because they will lead clearly into the right direction. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. I think we have a very good example where to look to. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much.